All right. Welcome to the Dan and Danny podcast. We have a very special episode for you today. I'm honored to introduce you guys to my friend, my jiu-jitsu coach, Mikhail Abdullah, businessman, great guy to know. We got some awesome stuff from, coming for you guys today. First, we're gonna be talking about self-defense a little bit. Mikhail's gonna be sharing some techniques, giving his perspective on some things. Mikhail's also a successful local business owner, so he has some kind of expertise with brick and mortar businesses that I don't have and that Danny doesn't have. So he's gonna be sharing some of the things that work for him uh, to make his business successful. And he's also been doing really well, much better than most businesses during 2020. So he's gonna share some of the things that he did to adapt much better than most businesses did. So I am super excited Me to too. be getting into all of this. But first things first, our shots. Let's get to our shots. Let's do it. So, what are you drinking today, Danny? So I'm gonna be drinking the Western Sun Blueberry yet again, um, like I did in my original first three episodes. And then Daniel, what are you gonna be drinking? Oh, me, Mikhail, and John are having an adventure. This is Pinnacle Cake Vodka. This was left at my house six years ago by my ex-girlfriend's friend before my last ex-girlfriend. So this is a long time ago. Yes. I've let this sit for a long time, so today we are finally drinking this aged. Aged. Let's find out. Was it ever opened? Uh, yeah, she brought it over like halfway drank, but yeah, I just never drank anymore. Is okay. that even good for you now? I guess we'll find out. If I die during this podcast, you'll know not to do this. We'll know in 2020. <laughs> All don't, right, gotta don't, give don't. John his shot. Thank you. And McCall, cheers to being cheers. our first guest on the podcast. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Cheers. Thanks, guys, for having me out. Ooh. What do you think about the cake? Oh, man. Delicious. <laughs> Tastes gluten-free. I thought I gave you the Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Amsterdam? I'm not sure which one. Whichever one it tasted Did it delicious. taste like pineapple? I think there was a little bit of, there was, there was a tinge of pineapple in there. Then it wasn't that one. That, that wasn't cake? Was. Mine was kind of like if you made cake into a syrup and you drank cake syrup. It, oh, that was not mine. <laughs> that was not mine. So I'm thankful that you. Yeah, right. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Well, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> he falls down, oh, and I'm like, I'm good. So thanks. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. I saved him. <laughs> Hopefully this will work out. Yeah. <laughs> so for the people that don't know you, Mikhail, can you tell the people a little bit more about you and what you do? So many things. A um, uh, bit of my background, former military. Um, oh, a branch. Army. Okay, Army. cool. Combat vet, all that good fun stuff. Um, and uh, post-military, uh, like a lot of guys after the ETS. Like, the Army, we call it ETS. After Everybody, people call it EAS or whatever. What um, is that? When they exit their term of service, gotcha. finish your your contract. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Jiu-jitsu, I'd rest, I'd wrestled growing up, but jiu-jitsu like gave me an awesome um, escape, mm -hmm. and uh, really gave me it, it. It was an awesome vehicle for my walkabout that I kind of had to go to, go through. Yeah. After that, uh, so at at some point, I did lots of other businesses and was able to start and and. Uh, and be successful in some other things. And then finally I decided that I wanted to like share something I really, really cared about, which was jujitsu. And I launched my first jujitsu club right after coming off a bunch of uh, wins around the world. Mm -hmm. And um, I had the, the awesome opportunity to, to befriend Dan over here. And, uh, and just synchronicity, right? He, we, I didn't really have anything to sell, but we had just a lot of friendship conversations yeah. around, um, editing about video around you know marketing and stuff like that and I, I give a lot of cred to you right uh, as a as a as a use case right because a lot of those conversations turned into a really 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 successful business and industry leading business actually so so anyway and now we're here hanging out yes I yeah. can remember that yeah. I can remember um, back in the day before Macau had his own schools or a bunch of different schools now. Yeah. Uh, back when you were a purple belt, I remember you came to give me private lessons back at my office, yeah. and um, oh, that's who you were talking. That's right. Yeah, exactly. He was that's telling me about yeah. that. So I was actually I hadn't trained jujitsu in about two years. I was actually about to quit. I probably never would have trained again if we hadn't started training Thanks. together. Awesome. Oh. But I, I got to thank you. You really reignited my love for jujitsu. So thank you for you getting me back. You touched his into heart. It. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. And we're still bros all these years later. I'm like. How long has it been? Just, it's been. Well, Eight, you're a black belt, years? or a first degree black belt. First degree, right? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, it's been a it's been a few years. Eight years. Yeah, right. Jeez, aces have been that's open not for a seven. few. That's a long time. <laughs> yeah. And, and I gotta say, one of the things I love about your training approach is that you take more of a cerebral approach. Yeah. 
um, that a lot of people that, you know, they think they're getting into mixed martial arts or jiu-jitsu is going to be a bunch of meatheads. Yeah. And sometimes it is. I mean, yeah. sometimes a lot of schools, Fair. it's, you know, Fair. it's just a bunch of guys wrestling without good techniques. There's a lot of injuries. I, I really like, though, how you screen the people going into aces, though. There's much less injuries compared to other schools, and you keep everybody real safe. Everybody thought that was going to be something that was going to uh, close the business down. It was going to be a non-starter. When I said I was going to create a club, instead of like an academy. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I- What's the difference? Well, I grew up like club wrestling, right? The mentality is very different than the jujitsu industry's perspective on, on academies and gyms, right? A club is very us-centric, right? And it has to do with us first identifying who we are, right? Who our culture is. Right. And then, and then uh, allowing people to sign up who, are, who, who fit in with our culture. This right? kind of reminds me of Cobra Kai. Yeah. Where it was separated <laughs> yeah. by, like, uh... He's a lot Miyagi. nicer than Johnny, though. He's a little bit. No, but I'm saying Miyagi's, like, was a little bit more, like, free-flowing, like, join if you really want to learn and, like, be successful in this. And the other guy was like, if you want to kill people, you better join this one, like... Well, well for, for us, community, a lot of people think that fighting is such a solitary sport, but it yeah. really is a team sport. Yeah. Because nobody gets really good without... Um, effective training partners, teammates, mentors, yeah. um, and and I think that this misconception is what is the reason that most people fail, right? So one of the things that we put on the the, the, the front, uh, the forefront of our brand as we've built and developed with our staff, with everybody we consistently retrain over, is like fortifying our culture, right? Making sure that we see ourselves as community builders, not just coaches, okay. right? And and that takes a lot of inner work. Right? And yeah. like, who are we? Right? And, uh, and then if you're not a good fit, then we'll recommend another place. Right? There's another place down this, which sometimes I know gets people upset. But, um, well, like, what know. do you mean you have to rec recommend another place? Like, what do they do for you to have to do that? Well, uh, we had one guy got real mad once because, uh, so we are very much, our, we've taken some strong stances on inclusion. Okay. Right? And uh, one example of a guy who had a bunch of swastikas and like some Nazi tattoos and stuff. Oh my God. And um, we just took a strong stance. I'm like, that's not really what we're about, man. And, and before anybody looks at this, it's like, well, what if he changed? He had not. All right? Um, <laughs> right. What do you um, <laughs> that's a big commitment to get a Nazi yeah. tattoo. You're that like, yeah. <laughs> You're like, damn. Um, and, uh, and, and he got, he got really, we actually turned his negative review into an ad. <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> so, write that down. What did right? he even have to say that was so negative, though? Like, if... Well, I mean, if you see, like, unlike some people, if I see, if I see some shit where you have, like, a Nazi tattoo or you have something that's not inclusive, mm -hmm. and I mean, that's one strike, it's red flag, right? Right. And uh, I'm going to ask you questions about it. Because he, as, as a steward of a community, I see it as my responsibility to make sure that as you training partners, that your experience is just fucking awesome, mm -hmm. right? Which means there needs to be a filter for me to make sure that before somebody touches you, they first are vetted, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and is this the kind of person that uh, D&D are going to appreciate, right? right? And it, it, are, are they our people? Because if they're not, then I still want you to train, but just not with us, yeah. right? And there's this weird kind of like a, a weird kind of idea that you know you have to train i don't have to fucking take your money i don't value it that that much right i value my community more than that mm -hmm. so anyway um uh, we asked the guy like hey what was what's going on what's up with that oh well, that's my my stance on x y and z right and i was like well we are diametrically opposed to nazism all kinds of bigotry and sometimes some types of fuckery right <laughs> <laughs> so uh anyway the guy got mad and uh and he wrote even wrote a negative review about us, and then we turned it into an ad that was really successful. So thank you to that guy. What did he say? Oh, it was just that you know how close-minded we were. <laughs> you know, like f f fuck this new age bullshit, <laughs> right? Where where Nazis think you get to get heard, right? But, you know, um, that's funny. The Nazis said you were close-minded. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, know. I thought that was I thought that was kind of hilarious. Um, but, but actually, yeah. let's take a step back for a minute for the people that might not know about jujitsu and what that is. Uh, can you explain what Brazilian yeah. jujitsu is and why yeah. we train in Brazilian? Yeah, jiu yeah, for sure, for sure. So uh, Brazilian jujitsu is a a form of grappling, right? Um, which is most became you know super popular in the Western world um, in the advent of the UFC, right? Uh, 
We, we love watching you. Yeah, we're watching the early ones now, the Hoist Gracie ones. Yes, yeah, absolutely. You've seen them. Man, they were so sharp about that. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my good friends is actually uh, Maestro de Higan Machado. He's like one of the developers of the original developers of the UFC. Oh, nice. Right? And uh, world champ, we've actually had him down to our locations. Um, he trains all kind of the who's who in Hollywood and stuff. Nice. And uh, the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, the, the idea is that a smaller, weaker person can use leverage and mechanics to uh, be able to take down a larger person and let's be real, strangle or break a limb, right? I don't, I'm not going to use like that nice little language, like it, it is what it is, right? Um, and it's awesome to be able to empower uh, people to be able to have that kind of control in their lives and the other nonviolent stuff that comes along with it. Like if you're not concerned about getting beat up, or even by somebody twice your size, you notice people show up differently. Yeah. Right? Like and they're, they're like most authentic selves, right? Like I, you know, that thing I wasn't sure I was going to wear because convention and you know, and other people making fun of me. You're like, yeah. no, I'm going to show up with my freak flag, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yes, and, exactly. Yeah. Uh, or in that, in that business meeting, I'm going to say that, that, that thing I thought was smart, but a, a couple weeks, a month ago, I might not have said because I, I was concerned about getting talked down, right? And, 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 and that's pretty dope. But back to the physical side of things, um, yeah, like it's, it's, it, think of wrestling, except for after you get to the ground, um, you can control the person uh, or you can put them to sleep. Uh, or you can, you know, break a limb, right? And it's also a really fun game um, that when you, you learn the practice, you're able to play with your friends. It's called human chess, actually, mm -hmm. right? Uh, which I really love, which is why a lot of, like, it, it, at the beginning, it was a bunch of, like, meatheads in America starting to move in that direction, and then it kind of had, like, the nerd revolution, yes. right? <laughs> Where lots of analytical people realize, like, hold on, leverage, pulleys? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> science, <laughs> like cool, right? I can use that, and um, and that's kind of our sweet spot, yeah. and which has worked because we're the number one winningest team in Central Texas. So yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh you got yeah. many, many pounds and pounds of medals. There are like yes. multiple layers of medals in the trophy case, and it's a great place to train too. Yeah, and but, fun, uh, and Macy, no Nancys. Macy actually just started training at Aces. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she just did her first few classes, but can I'm you tell us about that? Like what your classes class. were like? Yes. I'm on my fifth class now. Um, so far, okay, so I was telling McCall earlier that I did a bad back roll the last uh, weekend during jiu-jitsu because yeah. um, instead of rolling over my shoulder like I should have, I actually rolled over my neck yeah. and cracked all of that from head to toe yeah. and just was so sore after that. Yeah. Th so that, uh, that I, you know what, I'm excited to like help walk you through how to be able to train your body yeah. to, to make that movement. What was that first roll, the front uh, roll? Uh, well, just for you guys to know what she's talking about, this was uh, one of the warm-up exercises where we're doing backwards rolls. Yeah. So, so as part of the class, it, it's probably my fault. I probably should have showed you that before we went into class, and then you just start doing backwards rolls, basically. Well, every other one I was doing just fine. The front roll, that one, what was that called again, where I just had my one so, arm? Four yeah, roll. just four. four yeah, okay, yeah. so that one was perfect after just the first class doing that. And yeah. then the back one, I just, for some reason, I could not get the strength to push myself far enough backwards. So are you ready for this? It's not a strength thing. It's a leverage thing. Okay. Right? And I'll, I'll gladly go over it with you because mm -hmm. there's a trick to it. If you try to force it, mm -hmm. that's when, uh, and, th and that's why we keep it as part of a warm-up. A lot of people, if you see a lot of, like, uh, street fights mm -hmm. on, on, on YouTube and stuff, you'll see a lot of people fall and kind of hit their heads, yeah. right? Excuse me for the audio, right? Um, hit their heads, um, you know, or fall into things. They're just not in control of their descent. Right. And they're not in control of what happens after they land, right? So it's, it's such an important part of the warm-up because you can, if you kind of curve your body to protect your head and you seat yourself appropriately, you, can, you, you will just continue to rock back with okay. a rounded back, right back standing up again. Okay. Right? Which is really awesome, but it does take some training to be yeah. able to do, right? So we'll, we'll, we'll get you squared away. Okay, dope. Done. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, um, I don't know. My first class, obviously, like doing anything new for me. I'm a very yeah. shy person. Ask Daniel. He's watched me like come into the gym the first time, like all crouched down. Like I have no idea what I'm doing here. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I can do this. Let's do it right now. Like, yeah. so yeah, first class I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like Daniel yeah. had to come and help me because like I was so embarrassed that yeah. I wasn't doing anything right. And then, yeah, by the last class I was able to actually roll with somebody else. Yes, very And cool. they taught me how to do an arm bar. 
Nice. Yes. I love it. Yes. And I'm so glad that Macy's doing jujitsu and getting into training with me. Uh, but what, what do you think, Mikhail? For so um, a lot of people that I've known in the past, especially a lot of women, mm -hmm. um, they've said like, "Oh, I don't know if I need to train jujitsu. If I got into a self-defense situation, I would just go crazy, and yeah. you know, I, I yeah. would, I, my instincts would go out." I mean, what do you think? Is that going to work out? I mean, or? tell that to the many victims across our historic, our history as humans. You know, you're not going to flex and bust out. Uh, there, there's if fighting, I think a lot of people have this misconception that fighting is magic, mm -hmm. right? Instead <laughs> of it being science, right? Uh, listen, like if you're pinned under a vehicle, mm -hmm. right? You can't, you're not gonna flex and bust. I'm gonna flex and bust out. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, yeah. I'm still in the same spot, right? Um, if you are, if you're a 125 pound woman and you're in an altercation with a 200 pound man, I'm just gonna be straight up. If he has bad intentions, you're gonna get fucked up. Unless you use science, unless you use leverage, right? The ability, we're humans, right? I'll get, to give you an example, right? if, if you've ever been camping and you had a stick that you were too weak to break and before you're like, I'm super strong, then press pause, right? Because you don't need to hear this, right? The, um, but for, for the rest of the humans who have ever tried to break a stick okay. and it was too tough for you to break, okay. right? You're a human, right? So you put one end on a rock and one end on the ground and you step on it, yeah. right? And then it's broken in half and then now you, you have some, then you put it in the fire, right? You're like, cool, I'm a human. We make, we use tools. <laughs> ha, right? <laughs> um, it's the same concept. For instance, if you had somebody's arm, if you tried to just grab it and break it in half, it's not likely you'd be able to do that, right? But if you used, if you, you created, an, used an arm bar, right? Uh, to control one end of the arm at the shoulder, and the other end of the arm at your chest and had it hyperextended and use your hips to send the elbow yeah. up past the 180 degree line, you would break that person's arm. That's right? exactly what I was taught and, the and last that, time I was in class. Yeah. Perfect. And that, and that's, and that is the, the beauty for a smaller person, mm -hmm. right? Well, if, and if you say, well, I'm a bigger person. Well, we're all small when we're tired, first of all, mm -hmm. right? And, or if you're a larger person who gets out, out athleted, in, in a scenario, or since jujitsu, since MMA is the number one fastest growing sport like in the world right now, um, and jujitsu is a core component, more and more people are learning. So it's becoming more and more important, right, to be able to defend against it, which means you have to learn it. Because you are not gonna flex and bust out, right? You're, yeah. you're, gonna, you're gonna get fucked up. <laughs> like, like, yes, exactly. If that hurts your ego, then maybe release that ego, because we're all the same, right? But, but, <laughs> but it's just the reality. Right, and that's why I feel like everyone needs to have some jujitsu and some self-defense skills. Yeah. Actually, let me get your perspective on this. We'd like to hear what you think about sure. this. I've heard a lot of different things about this. Uh, weapons for self-defense oh, situations. Yeah. So some people say that mace is the right way to go. Some people say taser. Some people say concealed carry. Let's say if somebody's really concerned about this, they live in a dangerous area, what do you think would be the best way to go in terms of weapons? I told him before that I think that swords should just be legal. <laughs> just ninja style. Hey man, Mortal Kombat costume. Swords, sword, swords work, man. Um, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> well, to have a side note conversation. Some of the I've seen riots all over the world. Some of the dopest, one of the dopest riots I ever saw. It, it was a dangerous situation. It was like in uh, Hyundai, in like uh, Hyung, near Hyungik University in South Korea. Okay. And then I saw somebody break out a sword, and I was like, shit got serious. <laughs> I was like. I was like I can't imagine. Dope. I'm gonna step across the street. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, so I am a proponent of, of firearms, right? Um, but the problem with it, having been fortunate to have to be trained by some, uh, in the military and then to continue my training outside of the military with taking a lot of er different environments into consideration, um, that's a specialized training. And I think a lot of people, they misconstrue what appropriate training looks like. And there's also a lot of, you know, um, misinformation in the firearm space. And then even at your best, if you knew what you were doing with a firearm, people still are not always next to their weapon, right? Yeah. Or, or can get disarmed or, is it, or, or can have um, some kind of malfunction. So I think it's, if you're coming from a, Self-defense is a recipe, right? Um, and I think that may be a part of it. But if we want to make sure we have a strong foundation 
-hmm. of our ability to protect our ability to move and our ability to live, then we should probably have a conversation about our bare bones, our bodies first, right? Like if I had no, if I had access to nothing else, would I be able to stand on my own two feet? If I ran out of ammunition, right, or my weapon was far away, or I had a malfunction, like, and I am, it's just me solo. Am I able to still protect myself? Am I able to, 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 to take control, to take my rights as a person, to continue to not get unalived? Right? Right? Unalived. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I've never heard that term before. <laughs> you're gonna use it all the time. You'd be like, yeah. no, yes, don't get unalived. Right, that's how you say say goodbyes that. now. There you go. <laughs> Instead of goodbye now, you're just like, don't get unalived. <laughs> right. The uh, so I, I, that's why I'm such a huge proponent of, and you and you never know who you come in contact with in a self defense situation. So I'm a huge proponent of a strong base of of grappling first. And to that point, I remember I was teaching this one 13 year old girl who uh, she called herself 13 and a half, right? I used to do that. Yeah, I'm sure we've all done that. <laughs> I always and wanted to be older. This is, she, she was a really nice girl, nice family. She was mean as hell on the mats, right? And this guy walked in, she has super cool parents, and this guy walked in, for, uh, who is a, a friend, I think, of her dad. Or, or, but, but this guy, um, for some reason, didn't believe jujitsu worked. I'm like, but bro, there's a lot of empirical evidence, right? Right, you can test it out if you, you want. You can test it out. <laughs> and, uh, and this girl is like really, really aggressive, and she's really sharp, and she pulls the trigger, uh, pun intended, right? And uh, I was like, I like to gamble. You like to gamble? And the guy was like, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to gamble you 100 burpees, right? <laughs> that I have a 13-year-old girl, 13 and a half. All right, okay. Who, <laughs> she said that in yes, the background? She did, she did. <laughs> who, who will tap you out, right? Um, and if she does it, you know, then you have to do 100 burpees. And if I, um, and, and, and if not, then I'll, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. You can big face her. Of course, I had her parents' permission. Right. Like, you, you can big face her, you know, do whatever you got to do. And the parents obviously need this guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so... Uh, Anyway, this guy was down. He was not going light either, right? He tried to, like, slam her, right? Uh, she strangled him in under 30 seconds. That's hilarious. Right? This is, which is crazy, right? Because think of it. That means you, he's a 40-year-old man. You, you lived your whole 40 years. You're walking in a forest. You see a little fire. There's a 13-year-old girl. <laughs> Moments later, you're unalived. Right? <laughs> yeah. like, like, and that's the end of your story. <laughs> that's the end of your story. Your story ends there, right? That's a, like, that's <laughs> it's not going to look good on your tombstone. No. He was choked out by a 13-year-old right, girl. 13, 13 and a half. It's like dot, dot, dot. And he took it in a, in a healthy way. Like, he really did go after her. This was not a nice scenario, right? But she was really smart. She got really close to his body. He wasn't able to hit or big face or control her. And him struggling actually increased the, the, the It was a collar choke. Yeah. Right? And, um... Look at look up a collar choke. Right? I know yes. collar chokes are so cool whenever you actually watch them. Yeah, yeah it's like a slow choke. It's right? nice to go, go yeah. to sleep, right? especially when people have like this type yeah, of thing. Jacket, like, yeah, jacket. Yeah, exactly. He's choking out hipsters since <laughs> 1982. <laughs> so, can you explain what that is for people that don't know? For sure, for sure. So a collar choke, if I may, right? So um, you're you're and with a collar choke, you're you're creating some kind of uh, strong position, right? With a framing arm, as I like to call it. You're getting rid of the slack, let's say, of this jacket. And then I'm going to use an ex executing arm to grab underneath, right? Underneath all, the jacket? Underneath my arm. Okay. Right? Now that I'm here, boom, I'm able to, I'm able to use my structure, oh, right, and close the space, right? And now this is just a half-assed collar choke. Did you if see was, how quickly he actually tapped him? Yeah, it that turns, comes on fast. It, tur it turns very on very fast. fast. Uh, chokes are essentially restricting blood or restricting air. Right? As, at first, when you're first doing it, it's always going to usually be air. But as you get better, it'll start to be blood, which ha turns on real fast. So the person just kind of goes to sleep. Um, it, and, and you can't, like, flex and bust out. Like, <laughs> no blood to the brain, bro. Sorry. Right. <laughs> right? But anyway, that, that guy, we had a quick convo. You can look at this two different ways. You can look at this as, like, your life ended in that forest. Right. You actually use that scenario in, in, with him? With him. Talking awesome. To him. Okay. Absolutely. That is like, this is the end of your story. Because that's what unalived means, right? Right. Uh, you, somebody watching this might be like, maybe he got reincarnated. It doesn't matter. It's the end of this story. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and, and you can look at it that way and you can become sad. Okay. Right. 
Or you can think, wow, if that 13-year-old girl is empowered to be able to do that to me, what could I do as a man against another man who was twice my size, right? And, and, and what, and all, there's another ego thing there. If I'm susceptible to that, what lessons do I personally have to learn when I'm going through this experience? And so, uh, anyway, he started training. If he hadn't, I'd probably say his name right now. But he, but he, <laughs> but he started, but he, st he started training, and, um, and it was, it was awesome to be able to, to see, to help people go through that kind of cathartic process of... It sounds like a philosophy thing, like a, thinking about your life. I think it is. I think it's a great vehicle. Jiu-Jitsu is a great vehicle to have that conversation about life. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think Jiu-Jitsu is like the grappling thing we talked about, but yeah. it's also, it's how you overcome obstacles. As you start to train with other people know, who know how to fight, right? Somebody throws up an obstacle because they're attacking you. Mm -hmm. And how do you intelligently overcome that obstacle with an even keel without creating new problems? Yeah. Right? <laughs> that's, that's probably one of the biggest life applications I learned from jujitsu that if there's an obstacle, don't try to power through it. I used to like really tend to do that a lot, but try to figure out a way around it. For example, when we met on Tinder, oh she wouldn't God. give me her phone number. Yeah. <laughs> so there was an obstacle, but I didn't try to power through that like I used to before jujitsu. I instead we just talked on Tinder. No, he just invited me to go get food that. and that's what got me. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Smart man. Food that's one is example. always the solution. <laughs> yeah, it works. Jujitsu has helped me a lot too in uh, negotiation situations. I used to yeah. get really nervous, but after being in a lot of jujitsu matches and practicing a lot, then it kind of um, it turns down the volume on like non-physical conflict, I would say. For sure. But what do you think about that? Like, like let's say for people out there, they're thinking like, oh, you know, I live in a safe neighborhood. I'm probably, probably never going to use jujitsu in a self-defense situation. Yeah. Like, what are the other benefits and the reasons why you still want to train? Well, well, for one, I would tell that person, what, <laughs> ask most statistics, yeah. right? <laughs> and they would have said the same thing that you said. Yeah. So that's not, so logically, that's not a, it's not a great excuse, right? Um, and, and then and there's probably something to check in on in there, right? Because, uh, you know, people have, confront humans have confrontations in nice neighborhoods and poor neighborhoods, mm -hmm. right? Um, it, and sometimes they're physical, right? And sometimes they're not. Um, but they happen everywhere. Everywhere there are humans, right? Uh, and for two, if you don't have an overarching time-tested, an action-tested philosophy on how to overcome obstacles, I think that jiu-jitsu is a great way to kind of solidify your perspective on how to do that, right? Because how you fight is how you deal with obstacles. Right? We call it the jiu-jitsu handshake, right? If somebody's a bully, it's hard to hide who you are when you start doing a friendly role, you know, a friendly sparring session. Um, if someone's a bully, because then they'll show you, right? If somebody kind of takes a circuitous route, in order to like to, to resolve issues, then then that's how they'll handle that that issue, right? Um, if somebody kind of wilts under pressure, which is a lot of people, a lot of people who on the outset you might look at and say, oh that guy, huge, tough, very, he's got a lot of bravado, you know, um, and then when they they wilt under not having a solution, right? Uh, and I love training those people because that gives like. like it, you, you have the stuff to turn on the solution, but you don't have the mindset that helps you to identify what that solution is under duress in a fast-moving, violent situation, right? And what would that do? Ask yourself, what would that do in your life, right? What would that do in your relationships to create solutions? What would that do in your business? What would that do just, in, just as you show up in the fucking world, right? Um, even if you never get into a physical altercation again, which is a statistical certainty for some people, right, in every environment. But anyway, that's what I would say to that, to those people. Yes. So I have a quick question. Yeah. If a girl, in your best, like, way, mm -hmm. how would you have a drunk girl leaving the club fight somebody in an alleyway for self-defense? Well, anytime you're getting inebriated, um, you're... But somebody takes it upon themselves to use that as their advantage. Well... So for one, anytime you get inebriated, even if you're a good fighter, mm -hmm. the reality is, is that your skill goes down. Yes. Right? Right. If you're, oh, the, yeah. if you're, if you're like a seasoned attorney and you're great at like having a conversation um, and as soon as you, know, you get drunk and your, your skill goes down there, 
Uh, I would, for those, and I've run a lot of like women's self-defense programs. The first step, I think, is not the physical confrontation, it's vigilance, right? It, uh, it has to do with preparation, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the, we've, normally when we do women's self-defense, uh, we don't, like a lot of these places bring in all this kind of bullshit techniques, kick him in the balls or throw cayenne pepper in his face. That's a real thing somebody said once. Just that carried in your purse and ridiculous. Like, have it ready to go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <it's, laughs> that was a re true story. The, um, um, and, and that stuff doesn't like, doesn't, it's, it's not scale, those aren't scalable solutions. The, the first step is to not get into those situations. Yeah. Right? Um, by making sure you're inside of a group. Yep. Right? By limiting your, uh, your intoxication. By the way, these are mitigation f tactics. That doesn't mean you're not going to get in trouble. Right? Um, but you're just trying to reduce the probability, right? Uh, making sure that you go to the vehicles together, right? Um, making sure you already have your keys out, right? Before you get to, the, before you get to a vehicle, right? Looking in the back seat before you get there's, there's a whole host of vigilance factors, right? Um, that, and, and understanding some statistics, right? Like, for instance, if somebody moves you against your will, like your, your, your likelihood of surviving that situation and it moves you from place to place, right, can reduce by around 80% in some studies, right? So, like, so I would say the first thing, and it's probably not the answer some people want to hear, mm -hmm. right, is don't get in those situations, yeah. right? What could I do about it? A lot. Yeah. There's a good bit that you can do, right? Um, and, it, and it first comes down to that. If the person is already inebriated and they're in a self-defense situation, they would probably realistically have had to have trained for quite a bit, a while, to be able to, uh, and they still won't be at their best. Right. That being said, there's to loads of videos on YouTube of women defending themselves against men in real life situations. Um, uh, like men who are bigger than them, like breaking their arms, taking them down, all kind of stuff. This is real life, right? And uh, which means two things. One, jujitsu works. Two, Somebody filmed that. <laughs> yeah. That means they didn't help her. Right. Right? Which means you're kind of on your own. And so it's important to be able to, like, invest a couple of hours a week, maybe two sessions a week, right, to learn this fun game and empower yourselves from tools that just happen to, like, prepare you in case of that situation and just happens to, like, maybe help you out in your business, your relationships, and all this other kind of stuff. Exactly. Get some great exercise, meet some great people at the same time. Yeah. Super, usually pretty even keeled people. Yes, exactly. Yeah, Did you tell him I started training in my sleep? <laughs> That's a thing. People start dreaming about you. Yes, I've literally you're, you're been doing solving. that. Because yes. you're, you're like, you're problem solving. I'm making up all these yeah. scenarios in my dreams, yeah. and then I'm fighting people. Yeah. <laughs> yes. How would I resolve this? <laughs> All right, so I wanted to make sure to talk about, too, a little bit of uh, the business side of what you're doing, because I think people would really want to hear about that, too. Yeah. So I think it's amazing what you've done. Man, I can remember years back when we were training in the office, back before you had any schools. Yeah. Um, it basically started from there, and, and now you have uh, four schools, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so built this whole empire out of nowhere. Uh, could, could you tell people? Actually, five, five now. We were in Houston. Oh, that's right. You always tell me you were in Houston. Multi-city. Yeah. It, it, could you tell people a little bit about uh, the most important things that you think you did in order to experience that growth? Yeah. I mean, it's again, it's a recipe, right? So boiling it down to any one thing would, I think, do a, a disservice to the other parts of the recipe, right? But I, I, I'll, I'll punctuate with this. A lot of the things, and sometimes when people pose a counterpoint, to convention, you know, um, I think I'm, I'm actually not a fan of doing that just because, right? I have this, I'm, when other people zig, you zag. Maybe they're zigging away from a cliff. Right. right. <laughs> right? So, so, so maybe you should too. But there are some things that we, we looked at when I first wrote the business plan um, for Aces, Jiu Jitsu Club, uh, about how we would have to be different or, or it wouldn't be worth doing for me personally, right? And and we really endeavored to do those things, and we did it very differently, and continue to do it very differently than a lot of people um, in the industry, which is really funny. Like our locations, you'll see, if you go to our locations, like the conventional concept with this big sign and bright lights and all yeah. that stuff, like none of our locations have a sign. <laughs> have a sign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, we're, and we're the largest um, uh, in, in, our, in our industry in uh, this region, right, which is a 
pretty big deal. And currently, even during this crisis, um, we're now growing faster than we were pre-crisis, right? So it's a, I, 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 think, I think it's pretty interesting. One thing, as we open more locations and we employ and work with more really awesome artists who want to share their jujitsu with other people, because that's where we are right now, opening more locations. Um, I would say knowing your lane is a really big deal. A big part of our specialty is understanding our numbers, right? And um, knowing, and not just like how many new members, right? But we have an entire subset of operational numbers. Like we know how many missed classes you probably take before you start to quit on your goals, right? And then we can create some kind of communication for you to help you out with your goals. Um, I think one of the things a lot of people do, it's like dating, you know? They, 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 they market to uh, customers or clients, we call ours members, right? And, and then as soon as they become a member, the marketing is over, right? It's like, as soon as we went on a date, I don't need to woo you anymore. Right? <laughs> yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. And I Is think, that what happened? <laughs> I hope not. Sorry, <laughs> I'm just kidding. And I, and I think that uh, that's a big, for even the, even the attempt at continuing to create uh, campaigns and processes to continue to woo people who have like, who've shown that they love you and uh, want to train with you, like that's a big deal, right? Uh, <laughs> what's that show, The Arrested Development? You yeah. ever seen that movie? The money's in the banana stand. <laughs> All right. Um, if you, you, you focus on that, I think that's a big deal. And, and the other thing is like being super focused on two things. What's real, right? Because most of this shit inside of people's businesses is just like shiny object, shiny object, shiny object. There's only a couple things that are actually important, right? Focus on that. And the other thing is growth, right? If you can be the biggest dog in the yard, then be the biggest, somebody's gonna be, right? And then I think it's important to ask yourself, if you, if you want to have one solid location, then you should probably open up two locations, right? If you wanna have two locations, you should probably open up five, right? When things like this happen, I can't tell you how many people in our, in our space have been put out of business. Not us though, we're able to continue providing our promise um, at a high level to all the people that, because that's what an agreement is, our, when you sign up to train, we're, you're making a promise to train and we're making a promise that we'll help you. Yeah. And we're able to do that because we went big, fast, to create a buffer against, you know, crazy things that might happen. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that might be um, your jujitsu experience helping you out in business too. I think that's a really great point for people out there to learn because a lot of people, they, they have a goal and they're like, okay, I'm going to do this one thing and this one thing's going to work. It's kind of like in karate where they do their kata and yeah. this one thing is going to work. Yes. But, but we know that plan A doesn't always work, so sometimes you have to go to plan B. Yeah. But I think everybody can learn from that, though, that sure. if you want one location, start two, and one of them, one of them likely is going to work out. Yeah. If you want one successful ad, run at least a few of them, one of them is likely going to work out. Absolutely. Yeah, but basically having a plan B and not just relying on plan A only. Absolutely. And they can be subsets of that plan, like plan, plan A1, A2, A3, A4, right? Because uh, it, it's, it's not, it's not it, it, the idea for us has been the more zip codes that we can control, um, the cheaper our ads become. The more other things, and that's not just about ads, but other things start to happen that you might not have realized are in existence when you have um, this many committed impressions from a business standpoint, right, who are consistently training with you. And, and it allows you to be able to keep your promise to a, to, a, to a higher degree, it's pretty dope. I think that's a big deal. Um, some people, and the next thing is fucking haters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Always gonna be haters. I'm sure there'll be a few on this video right here. All the karate guys will. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck you. Right? <laughs> the, um, the, uh, <laughs> not because you're a karate guy, because you're a hater. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and so, the, uh, the uh, you know, uh, the other thing is, it, it's, it's, uh, I like to post this kind of meme with our guys. Uh, it was like Michael Phelps looking forward, right? And this uh, guy who was in second place was like looking at Michael Phelps, 
right? And it, if you're if you're if you're going for the win, you know, you focus on your own goals, right? Um, people who are so focused on like I call it business hipsterism, right? My this other business owner didn't subscribe to my personal ethics, right? Um, you know, that's a waste of fucking time. It's a waste of emotional energy, right? Uh, and when people do that, you know that you're doing something, you, you're probably doing something right, right? Uh, yeah. and, if, and if you feel that that's creeping up inside of you, you need to drink some, uh, some, some uh, grass juice or something. <laughs> fucking purge that, <laughs> purge that shit. Right. Detox. Uh, from detox. The hating. <laughs> detox that hating because that's that's fo- that's focus. That's investment that you could be putting on you moving forward. Um, and I think that's that's another interesting thing that kills a lot of people uh, amongst entrepreneurs. Yeah. What do you think about that? So, yeah, I do think that. Um, well, I know it's something that I've struggled with in the past too. Like uh, right. back with my last business, sixpackabs.com, sixpack shortcuts. People would sometimes make videos like hating on us, and it used to bother me at first. Right. But then I realized that pretty much every popular channel had people hating on them. So if you have people hating on you, it just means you're one of the popular channels. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Really, if you have nobody hating on you, that's when you should be worried because that means that nobody's paying attention. Yeah. No, absolutely. And if anything, it kind of feeds the algorithm yeah. in, in in a modern market, right? He's like, yeah, hate, 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 and, <laughs> yeah. and spread my videos some more. I notice there's a correlation between your hate and my search traffic. Exactly. <laughs> Going up, you know, so, <laughs> so, so, like, I mean, it, it, it's, it's interesting. I think I came to you with a video, like, at the beginning of Aces, where somebody was, like, hating hardcore, and a technique that I had used to win at a high level, um, was just doing a technique video. It wasn't even a commercial. It wasn't an ad. It was a free gift, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Um, Nothing, no sell on the back, no one-time offer. It's just a gift to the community because I, I sincerely love jiu-jitsu and I sincerely love sharing with other people. And um, some people tried to hate on it, and I, I remember showing it to you, it was like years ago, and you said something to that effect. And uh, I wish I could say years later that I found something wrong with that, and I haven't. <laughs> yeah. No, you're absolutely right. Right? It's, it's I mean, yeah, people I are going to hate on all kinds of shit, and that's more of a reflection of them. Right than it is of you. Yeah. I've given that like we um, at some point, uh, I always said I was gonna feed a hundred people. I know it sounds weird. This is like a personal goal that I had set for myself. And uh, when I I felt like create weird when I found out how much money it costs to feed a hundred people, right? And we created this program, not a nonprofit. It's just no fuckery. Just here's the money. Lo- partner with a local restaurant. Feed a hundred people who weren't able to feed themselves, right? You know how much it cost, by the way? A uh, hundred people, maybe, was it like Over $5 a, a meal? Or I have no idea. Like 80 something bucks. No really? way. For a gourmet meal, baby. Where? For a gourmet meal. You, you buy the food in like a, in, in, in a, a like our, our restaurants get like special pricing, okay. right, on food, right? And if you buy it through or with a restaurant, and then they cook it, especially if it's gourmet or so they'll, they'll like souve the meat and all kind of stuff like that, and then put it in things and you can hand it out, right? And that could be if if you're into that kind of thing, right? Then you could do that. And I realized we were just talking about that, weren't we? Yeah. For eighty bucks, you could like take it. You could feed this many people. It's cheap. I was like a punch in the gut, and I was like, dude, I didn't know. I could should have been doing this sooner. Eighty bucks. That's like a bottle of almost okay scotch. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and so we did that and we shared a video, right? It was like, so far we fed like a thousand people because we did it like 10 times. People Jeez. started, and then people, some people started hating on it. It's not a commercial, not an ad. Wow. Never put a dollar Feeding on it. Feeding people. Even. Feeding people, exactly. People hate and on And people it. started hating on it. What and were they was, even saying about that? Oh, you're just trying to do this to, um, to get boost likes, your ego yeah, like or to get, or to get <laughs> likes. He's like, bitch, you don't even know what it, mean, it takes to get likes. What are you talking about? Because we only, we only did it like on, on our YouTube channel. Yeah. Right? Um, and, and, and kind of buried it. It wasn't for that reason. It was just, anyway. Uh, and, and that was kind of a punch to the gut. I was like, oh, yeah, you people are just, that's about you. You're just going to hate no matter what. If we, if we save a baby from a burning building, you're going to fucking, why didn't you use, why didn't you juke left? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> right, so, no matter what you do. Yeah, so if, if people are going to hate anyway, then that means that should free you 
to do your fucking beat, your fucking wildest, most baddest ass fucking self. Pick something crazy that you that would be industry, crazy to your industry and fucking do that shit. Man, I think too, it's kind of human nature if there's like the majority of people are awesome and giving us good feedback and there's that one negative person, it's human nature to focus on that one person. Like I, I remember this one time with my old company, uh, we had about 100 employees in the office and we found this one asshole who was stealing from the company. Yeah. And I was like really pissed about that for a couple days, but then I tried to think like, okay, we have 99 awesome people here and yeah. almost everybody is awesome. So it's kind of like that, I think, that most people are positive, most people are really great. The negative people can just have outsized impact if we don't learn to not focus on them. And that'd be poor investment, right? If you invested in that one person over those 99. Yeah, exactly. You're, 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 just, you're living your best life and you decide to invest your energy and emotion into the, into the outlier, which I think a lot of people do in common culture today. Yeah, yeah, Investing right. in the outlier instead of investing in the the, the wider positive that serves you. Yes. Sorry if I got a little extra woo-woo. <laughs> no, it's all good. And I think that's why it's good to do jiu-jitsu. It helps to uh, keep that focus on the positive and tone down the negativity. Yeah. Um, but can you tell people, Mikhail, uh, a little bit more about how people could find you, people in Austin, how they could uh, train with you? Yeah, absolutely. If you uh, go to acesjujitsuclub.com or aces, like the card, like cards, bjj.com, you'll be able to uh, check out our website, which is pretty cool. You'll be able to find us on Facebook, or uh, IG, Instagram, or YouTube using Aces Jiu Jitsu Club as well. Um, and or you can find me on IG personally at Cerebral BJJ. At Cerebral BJJ, because Cerebral, right? Not Cerebro. Somebody, some crazy X Man fan was like, I can't find you. And I'm like, Cerebral, bro, not Cerebro. <laughs> I feel you, but also. Gonna spell it out. It's different. For <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Non cerebral people. Yeah, exactly. There. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 um, yeah, absolutely. And, and if you are in the Austin area or in Houston, um, Texas, then we'd love to train with you. What and if part you're of Houston? In North Houston. Okay. Oh, North Houston, like, spring I used area. To live, oh, okay, cool. I used to live in Cyprus, so. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. We're actually expanding pretty quickly. We're, we're going to be opening up. Our mission is to open up uh, more locations all across the U.S. That's over awesome. Over the next few years. So, so we're. That's awesome. Right before, right when March happened in 2020. Right, we're in the middle of opening in, um, like in New Jersey and DFW and some other places. Um, and now we're getting back on track. So, so are you still opening up those? We, we will be very okay. soon. I'm really nice. excited about that. So awesome. Um, uh, but even if you're not in an area where we train, we love just connecting people because we really do care about the people getting the benefits of jiu-jitsu. So even if we recommend you to somebody else, still reach out. Like, hey, I live in, um, you know, Waukegan, you know, wherever, right? Um, Newport, Virginia. Uh, just give us a zip code and ask us what our recommendation would be to train in the area. And we will do some research and literally look it up and then communicate with you why we would train at that spot. And all of us are, everybody who works with us are all jujitsu nerds. So you'll know you're getting the real, the real deal, the honest opinion. Yeah. Yes, exactly. With yeah. the community you guys have, I'm sure your recommendation is going to be a lot better than like going on Google Maps, going on Yelp, and yeah. choosing a random school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I probably, yeah, absolutely. And we'll tell you why, right? So, yeah, man, I appreciate it. Man, and for everybody that's in the Austin area, in the Houston area, the other places where Ace is at, I can't recommend Aces highly enough. Definitely the best place I've ever trained. Mikhail, you've been an amazing mentor, amazing coach to me, and I love your style of jiu-jitsu. And you've built an amazing organization, too. It's not just you. You've got an array of an amazing black belts, brown belts now. Man, yeah. Luke, Ty, Greg, all the guys are so good. So if you have a chance to, tra to train at Aces Jiu-Jitsu Club, I highly recommend it. 100%. Yeah. Thanks so much, brother. And like, kudet, it, it, real quick, you, just to touch on that one thing. No, no man is an island, and, and it takes so many cool people to create a cool culture, yeah. right? And you're... You're one of those cool people. Well, both of you Thank now. You. Yeah. But you've, for, for years, you've also been a great brother, friend, and mentor. And so I'm excited to be on here. Hopefully, uh, we can have some more cool conversations. Yes. Yeah, and I yeah. actually wanted to go and kind of vlog um, on my channel at the Jiu-Jitsu Club so people can actually see what it's like yep. to train there. That would be awesome. Yeah, and I need you there so I can Done. have you train me. Yes. I'll be, you, you let me know. I will be there to teach that class myself. Awesome. Personally. Nice. All right. Yeah. I'm excited. Yes. Future episodes. Stay tuned. Yay. Done. <laughs> oh. hey, so thank you, Mikhail, for joining us. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we will see you guys next time. Keep Bye. training. Keep growing. <laughs>